everybody it is day 14 of my daily vlog challenge and as you can see today I have got quite a few guidebooks out um, and I thought I would take you through what I do when um, I've either got a new book or I'm planning a trip um, because some of these um, have walks that I can access via public transport and others don't. So sometimes it's just quite helpful in pre-planning to um, decide what I can and can't do and not have to faff with the organisation of the day. I think that was a theme that came up the last couple of days in my vlog is that sometimes it's, I just don't know what to do and if you can do the planning beforehand um, it's really helpful. So, without further ado, I thought I would show you some of the books that I've planned already, if that makes sense. So, I think I've shown this book previously, if that focuses. Um, this is the Y Valley and Forests of Dean Outstanding Circular Walks, and it's the Ordnance Survey one. And I've used this before. I took this to Hereford on me on my Hereford trip. And what's really lovely is with this book is that I can use it for um, trips from here in Cheltenham because it's easier to get to the Forest of Dean. And when I'm in Hereford, there's also ones that are easier to get from Hereford. So what I've done is I've written down, what I tend to do is write down a list of all the walks in the book, like so. And you'll notice that some of these are colour-coded. So the ones in red are ones that I definitely can't do. The ones in green are ones that I definitely can get to by bus. The ones that have got a bit of green and a bit of red means that potentially possible, but requires an awful lot more thought or planning. And yeah, that's how I've, I've managed the, um, the walks and working out what I can and can't do from the book that I'm doing. Um, obviously I've done this from Cheltenham, so, um, but I th I'm pretty sure this would work from Hereford as well because normally I'm pretty dedicated. If I need to get a train somewhere, I still will circle it as green, maybe with the red or orange. So um, I think the ones that are in red are just don't have any public transport around whatsoever. So then what I've done is then I'll decide, okay, well, which one of these walks my, might I like to do. So I'll look at the green ones and then I'll go, okay. So I'll literally will sit down on my computer with Google and I'll write down all the bus times, not all of them, but I'll come up with a plan. So I know that if, for example, I woke up at six, well, this will be leaving at 6.40. So if I was to wake up at five o'clock in the morning, I think, yeah, I want to do number three, Wind Cliff. Um, I know that I've put the train cost, so I've put there, it cost me 11 quid to get to Chepster and back. And then um, it gives me the train and the bus times. And I give myself some options here. So if I get up at five, I can leave at this time. If I get up at seven, I can leave it this time and normally I have at the at the front is getting out and then um, on the back is getting back. So this has got quite a lot of options as you can see so there's no excuse for me not to do this one and you can tell I've got I haven't really done very much of that those but they're all listed there and it just means that um, if I write these down, if I decide that I wake up and think, yeah, I'm going to go for a walk today, all I have to do is pick up this, and I know that I definitely, um, if I've packed my bag and I can focus on the important things, knowing that all of the legwork is done. So that's a good example of using that with this book. Um, so I'll put those back. Um, and I've done exactly the same with this book, which I've, you would have seen before if you've seen my videos. I've done exactly the same. I've got bits of paper. I mean, line over wood. Although that's not in the book, but I'll do the same if there's other local areas. Uh, line over wood is um, also near Cheltenham. And as you can see, there are an awful lot of buses. So there is no excuse. Even if I got up at two o'clock I could leave and get a five minutes past three bus 
and the last bus back is at seven o'clock. So there's no excuse really for doing line over wood. Um, and yeah, it's just, I found it really helpful to do that. Um, so that's that. And so I've got some new books. So today I'm going to be doing exactly what I've done here. Um, but with some of these other books that I've got um, in the last month or two. So this has just arrived and it's the Cotswold Made Easy series. Um, you'll see these have um, quite a few different areas. I mean, I've got the Brecon Beacons one here. I think I've got the Cairngorms and some other ones around as well. But I'm not going to be focusing much on... Th I mainly bought this one because um, I was doing... Oh, what was I doing? When I was in Hereford, I thought I could do with probably a um, gentler book um, because I think my ambitions were a bit um, big. So I thought, well, getting the book that was, you know, had some more tame ideas, but it still would be interesting. So I've got that for when I next go to Hereford, and the same with this one. So this is the 20 best walks in the Hereford and Lempster area, and this is by James Nixon. Um, and as you can see, when you open it up, you can't see my face. <laughs> um, but as you can see, if I zoom in maybe, um, I know that I can get to Peter Church. So I know that this is a walk I can do, which is why I've, I've opened it up and highlighted it a bit. But as you can see, it's not um, an OS map. It's very much a diagram. So I'm going to have to do an awful lot more planning with this one. But I'll do exactly the same with this. Um, I wasn't too enthralled by the fact it didn't have... Um, OS maps on it or a proper map and there's an awful lot of writing um, however this is so this is a golden valley and I've, I've heard a lot about this golden valley and I've, I've never been so I think there's going to be a lot of good walks in here I think I just need to do a bit more prep um, but I'll do exactly the same I'll just write down all the walks in and then I'll circle whether I can get to them or not via um, public transport, mainly by bus, um, but not for today, just because I am not in Hereford today, and I'd rather live in the moment, and so I've got this Cotswolds book, and so I'm going to be doing today, I'm going to be writing down all of the walks, and which ones I think I will get to, just to add to my collection and options if I decide to wake up and go, right, I'm going to this place today. As you can see, a lot of these have a green circle around it, and that means that the walk is easily accessible via public transport buses. Um, there's two at the end, so Hidcot and Woodchester Park, which hasn't got any colour around it, and what that means is I've not done any research on whether I can get to those or not. Um, they'll either get a red or a one. I'll look on Google Maps, um, have a little look and see whether it's doable or not, and if not, I'll put a red circle around or if it's complicated I'll do the green red kind of thing that I do um so my next job will be to go okay well what of these do I really want to do do any of these uh, tickle my fancy and then I'll write down um the bus times on a piece of paper like I've shown you before um so that I can pick that up and go when I feel well enough um, so that would be my next job with this. Um, just as a quick side, I really do like this series of books. Um, you open up the main, um, on the first page, it does all of the um, hard work of working out whether you can get public transport. It has the usual information that you'd expect from a guidebook, but it just is really helpful for somebody who perhaps has some kind of life-limiting health condition or maybe wants to try and do a walk. It gives loads of information. 
um, and the actual walks itself. There's a lot of pictures, which is nice. I'm trying to find the actual... Here we are, here's an example. So you've got nature notes, you've got all sorts. I'm trying to find the actual helpful bit. The story behind the walk. I never knew that they did this. I'm trying to find the actual... Here we are. So that's, for example, the border on the water. Gives you the catch of bus thing over there. If I can find my... That's that bit there. So it gives you all the usual information you'd expect from a walk. And then it gives you the, the actual route. You've got a scan me there as well. Um, it tells you all the accessibility. Um, even gives you the bus numbers, which I really appreciate when they do that. So I feel like this takes a lot of the legwork out. I mean, there's only 10 walks in them, which is a bit of a shame, because um, but it's 10 walks. So it's 10 walks that I wouldn't have had inspiration for without it. So I'm really grateful and I'm really looking forward to using these um, moving forward. So that is my uh, plan for the rest of the day, is to have a little think about this next coming week and to try and live a bit more intentionally, try and have a think about what actually do I want to achieve from this week and how am I going to use these guidebooks to um, achieve that, as in... And maybe if there's other ideas that I've got and places I want to go, just actually write down the bus times and the plans... Um, beforehand so that it's just less to do on the day so that I can just focus on the everyday stuff the getting up the getting packed up and and I even might try and pack a bag beforehand the only issue I have with that is there's um, always last minute things that you need to add and I almost feel like getting into a swing of things and doing it all at once probably is better because I probably will miss something if I'm doing it in batches at different times. So, But it's an idea. Some people might find it easier to pack their bag the night before so that they don't have to worry about it. But I think there's just too many things that I would need to add later on that potentially might make that a bit tricky. So, yeah, I do prefer to pack from scratch, um, or at least uh, mostly. But we'll see how that goes. It might be that I can get a bit better at that or just do something a bit different. But yeah, I think the, the biggest thing for me is the actual bus times and it's knowing that you can get back again because I think sometimes, especially the last week in the afternoon, I've thought, well, I can get there, but when's the last bus back? And I don't want to be running after buses um, because I don't want to get stranded somewhere. So um, yeah, it's not a good idea to be pressurising yourself when you've got health conditions that are not very good if you put pressure on. So I think that's me done for today. I hope that's been helpful. Um, I definitely recommend using guidebooks because um, they just take a lot of the planning out and they just inspire me to do things that I wouldn't have otherwise thought of. They give me practice with navigational skills because I generally have to go the way that it says, otherwise I end up in the middle of nowhere. So <laughs> I do just think these are really handy and also... Um, my brain doesn't cope with lots of words and I feel like having a guidebook just forces me to be a little bit more technical and to actually persevere with these things without it being a complete um, brain knackering thing because um, it has the map as well and I'm much more a visual person. So I do recommend guidebooks I think they are quite handy and that is me done for today see you tomorrow